So we're back. Now that we've looked at the acquisition case where one business was buying another business, we can now turn our attention towards the merger case where the two businesses will combine to become a combined entity which would be much larger in size. So when we talk about a merger, that is to create a new business, not an existing business where two businesses are combined. So business one and business two can decide that they would want to merge together to form a new entity that would have a strategic benefit in the market. All the risk will be shared between them. The benefits will also be shared and it would become a new combined entity. So the important thing to note over here is that this entity would be a new registered entity, whether it's a partnership or a limited company, right? So that's the merger case. Also, differentiate between the acquisition case where one company was buying another company and the new combined entity was the existing company already registered. Over here, a new company is being registered over here. Right, so what cases can we encounter in the course? We can come across a case where sole traders can merge to form a newly formed partnership Two sole traders can merge to form a newly registered limited company. We can also come across a case where a sole trader and, and partnership can merge to form a newly registered partnership. The essential idea over here is that there is no dominant party because they both are combining to become a stakeholder in this business. So when we were talking about acquisition, one party would obviously be the dominant one that was the buyer over here. There is no buyer and seller. They both are forming and becoming a part of this newly registered company. So something that we should discuss over here and obviously after our business purchase videos is that whenever you're buying a new business or you're evaluating merging with a new business, a very important ratio to look at is return on investment. Right, so this ratio essentially measures the profit before interest and tax, which is also called the operating profit upon the owner's investment. So this is applicable to all types of businesses, whether you're a sole trader, partnership or a limited company. So this ratio is essentially measuring the return on the investment on buying a business as operating profit. Remember operating profit is the core operating earnings of a business that the business has earned for all stakeholders, whether that's debt holders, shareholders, and that's the profit left after paying off all expenses, whether that's trading expenses and operating expenses. So the operating profit is a good indication of the core earnings for a business. So return on investment can be used as a measure of evaluating the business purchase. Right, and this is also applicable to mergers as well, where you would want to see how the merged business is giving a return on investment versus how they were operating previously as sole trader or as a partnership. Okay, after that, if we can also talk about the benefits and drawbacks of a potential merger, that why would two entities want to merge to become a new combined entity or a newly registered business? So if we talk about benefits, the obvious benefit is economies of scale. The merged business would be able to operate much more efficiently, which would obviously give them certain advantages that they would have not achieved while operating individually. A lot of effort is put into research and development. So if two businesses can pool their staff or research, that would improve the chances of achieving successful research outcomes, right? You can also merge for diversification by merging two different entities. You can broaden the horizon of products and services being offered. Then vertical integration. If you guys are not familiar with vertical integration, businesses might want to merge vertically so that they can control both the production and the sales side. A good example would be a manufacturer and a distributor. So if a manufacturer merges with the distributor, that would essentially eliminate the distributor's profit margin. The cost would go up and you can obviously dominate the market, improve your market share. And there are a lot of benefits that firms can achieve with vertical integration. 
So those of you who are unaware, McDonald's is one of the most famous companies that uses vertical integration to reduce their cost and increase profits. So McDonald's owns all the factories that produces their mixtures, their ingredients, and they can distribute it to all the stores, right? Even Netflix, by the way, Netflix started off as a rental business, DVD rental, and now it is into the business of online streaming of films and movies. So these are some examples of vertical integration. Now, what are the drawbacks? One of the drawbacks is that a merger can also lead to increase in cost, right? So prior to the negotiation, it can escalate the cost. Merger can also lead to higher prices. So if two entities merge and obtain a certain level of monopoly that can reduce competition, they would want to increase prices to benefit from higher profits. Mergers can also lead to job losses as some staff would have to be reduced. It can also reduce the staff motivation as well because larger organizations may find it difficult to encourage and motivate employees. All right, so these are some points that you guys should know or some you would have already known in different courses such as business studies and economics. And these are the reasons that you should mention if they talk about benefits and drawbacks of merger. So from the next video, we'll start with different questions on mergers and we'll take a look at different cases that can come, whether it's a sole trader and a sole trader merging or a sole trader and a partnership merging.